tan ta ta tan ta ta tan ta ta tan ta ta tan ta tan ta tan and today the big fight between my Leica M4P with a Kodak film a Portra 160 against my Fujifilm X100V with a film simulation Portra 160 okay so today the results let's start so I'm dead already just by running right now so uh, so let's speak about what I'm going to do first this video I will probably uh, record it over several days I'm not sure yet but if you see my clothes changing it's because of this okay and so for the Leica it's really easy this is a Kodak Portra 160 nothing more to explain okay nothing to tune it's here okay and on my Fujifilm maybe you don't know but with Fujifilm cameras you can uh, simulate uh, some film uh, you have already some Fujifilm uh, simulation in the body, okay, in the, in, the, in the camera, but you can create your own simulation. So I did not create this Portra 160, I actually uh, got it from a website called Fujifilm X Weekly. I'll leave you in description the recipe, as they call that, and the link to that site, so I thank them for that. So I'm going to use this in the camera. Obviously, I would put the ISO in 160 also. Uh, the way I'm going to work is the following one. I'm going to make every picture first with the Fujifilm so I can have to check the framing and make something really similar on my Leica. Uh, this is a 23 millimeter equivalent 35 full frame. And well, this is full frame if I can say full frame. Uh, now, at that time, no one knew the world for uh, full frame, but now people use it. Okay, so it's a 24 by 36. Okay, so th this is a 7 artisan 35 millimeter. So I will make the picture, uh, the, the light metering, I will make with my Fujifilm. Although here I've got a light meter, I will do with uh, the Fujifilm to have exactly the same aperture, the same speed, obviously the same ISO as it's uh, uh, ruled by this, okay, by uh, 160 here. So this will be my way of working. So we're going to see the result and my impression and we'll compare if uh, actually you do get something similar to a portrait uh, film look okay by the way i made a presentation video presentation of my leica m4p i'll leave you the link here and also i made a review of the x100v not mine the one they lent me at that time about a year ago i'll leave you the link here i also have a video to explain how to put a film in this leica so we're almost ready for the fight let's carry on So we're going to see the result of the fight, the match, well, maybe more like a parallel uh, comparison between uh, film and digital simulation. So let's see the result and what you think. So I made 36 pictures with the Leica. I made more with the Fujifilm because I wanted to make sure it was framed properly all this. Uh, so I'm going to show you now uh, only 36 pictures made by the Fujifilm. I select 36 that correspond to the, the Leica one, okay, the film uh, one, okay. So I'm not going to show you all the 36 uh, in the, this first part. At the end of the video, yes, I will put all of them, okay. So I will show you first a Fujifilm picture, then the future film uh, simulation picture, then the film uh, made by the, uh, with the Leica, okay? And then both together next to each other so you can compare uh, more or less. So I'll show you, show you maybe 10 pictures right now and to, to, so you have an idea. And then at the end of my conclusion, I'll show you the whole lot, okay? Very important, uh, the recipe applies to JPEG. So what I show you is uh, the JPEG direct from camera. I did not edit anything, although I did shoot RAW plus JPEG. I didn't use the RAW, I just had it just in case. But I show you the JPEG directly. I didn't do any post-production on the JPEG, did not uh, put more or less contrast, change colors, nothing, nothing, nothing. This is directly out of the Fujifilm X100V, what I show you, okay? So it gives you an idea uh, of the result you could get using your camera with film simulation straight into JPEG. This trailer on the street, I think the sky is the ideal color for a uh, co uh, portrait color, so we're gonna see. I'm 
another typical example of a uh, portrait situation as I call it this uh, look I think is brilliant I think it's really good Well, another situation that that is uh, crying, shouting, portra, portra, portra. Uh, well, it's not sunset yet, uh, still a couple of hours uh, to wait, but I'm not going to do a sunset picture now, uh, but it's when it gets really yellowish and uh, golden and uh, also uh, the pastel uh, watercolors, uh, sky colors are great for that. So we're gonna see that. The famous sentence F8 125th of a second and be there. Well, that's a, that's a moment. So, same thing F8 125th uh, of a second. Um, of, obviously uh, ISO 160 as I uh, copy the, the film that is uh, fixed there so we need to try to get a wave not on me but in the picture so let's do it This situation is really usual for me because when I go around with my daughter Pino, uh, very often I make a picture of that field. I don't go down from uh, my uh, van and just uh, don't come out. So I simply make picture from uh, the window. So I'm going to do at uh, ISO 160, obviously, uh, speed uh, 125th of a second and F 5.6. Let's go for it. While I was speaking, light went down uh, because it's uh, almost sunset. Uh, I'm going to open a bit more down to F4. I'm not going to uh, down, put down the speed. My favorite track, uh, the Fuji film is on F4, one five hundredth of a second. So let's go for it. Now a picture that includes the sun. Uh, so it's backlit all the vegetation okay and uh, I'm on f8 one five hundredth of a second I've made many pictures in this place, but first time it's raining, I think. Uh, it's always a bit, maybe not completely sunny, but uh, cloudy, but no rain normally, okay? So uh, I'm going to make picture anyway from my van, so I don't have to get wet outside, okay? So at F4, I'm reading uh, 250th of a second. Time of truth, moment of truth. Um, I think it's on 36 here, so I'm going to, to move the lever and see if it's the case. So 
So the film is done. Uh, I don't know in which order I'm going to mount this in the videos. I don't know if you see it before or after. I'm not sure, okay. But you see it's a real uh, portrait uh, film. And I'm going to get it to the to the lab and then I'll analyze, analyze the pictures. So you, you'll have a look at it or you've seen them already if you see this video. Well, I don't know in which order, okay, but okay. So my conclusion, well, it's not just my conclusion, is there are also your conclusion as you've seen the picture. Well, you'll see more at the end because I put all of them, but so far you've seen some, so you can have your own conclusion, your opinion, okay? So for me, I think uh, the results are really good, really similar. And uh, I would say maybe the Fujifilm is surprisingly more stable. Uh, it looks more always like portrait than the real portrait. Why this? Well, I think that, uh, it's not just I think, it is a fact that uh, film uh, does not always react the same situation depending on uh, the exposure, depending on uh, the orientation of the light or many things if it's uh, a bit underexposed, a bit overexposed uh, and if you see in the blue of the sky uh, you see the difference sometimes it's deeper on the original portrait than on the Fujifilm deeper blue why? because I think uh, on the simulation it always applies the same uh, parameter and when we speak about chemistry it uh, doesn't always react the same way so that could be uh, the explanation okay so this is what I see but I still think the result uh, is uh, amazing and it's really interesting that you could uh, simulate a portrait uh, Kodak portrait on the Fujifilm because you think well it can probably simulate only Fujifilm no Fujifilm cameras have their own Fujifilm simulation but you can uh, include up to seven profile uh, to create your own simulation there as you want okay so it's completely possible. Something else, the big advantage of the Fujifilm is you can actually at any time push the ISO and instead of being on 160, what I did full time, you could be on 400, 800. The same as you could actually push a film, but first you have to push a film uh, for the 36 exposure, just, just not just one, the whole film, okay? Second, when you push a film, normally uh, the quality uh, drops you have different grain, different aspects, and this is not the case with the, the digital simulation. Uh, you see that the aspect is still the same, quality stays the same, uh, you don't get as much more noise or more grainy, not that much, okay? Obviously, it's not the same thing pushing from uh, 160 to 800 than to uh, 6400, okay? But still, if you uh, push within what you would do with the film, like two or three stop maximum, that's okay that's fine okay so this is why i will probably remove this film simulation from my fuji film why because i also have the portrait 400 and they're really similar if you push uh, the 160 to 400 they're really similar so i think i'm going to leave a gap available for another film simulation and try something else okay i will keep my uh, portrait uh, 400 instead okay so my conclusion is that this is great obviously uh real life a real uh, film photographer want to have the magic of film and it's true the fact that you don't know how it will come out is some kind of magic sometimes it's scary but some, very often it's magic and when you get the film it's great when you get it developed it's great but I think for cost reason time uh, for whatever reason it's also great that you could use a camera a digital camera and in camera get a simulation that you can really enjoy the sensation of uh, seeing this result of it this was filmed without the inconvenience. Uh, I think this is really great, okay? At the end of the video, you can see all the, the pictures, so you'll even make more your, your, your decision, okay? Your, your opinion, okay? So, thank you for watching the video. If you, if you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, the small button on here, and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erichibo.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. Also, leave your links of my gear on Amazon, links to all the gear I've tested by KF Concept and Sandmark, and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.